Hi, everyone. Welcome to Curated by Becta's meal kit number 41 for the week of February 24th to 28th. Thanks for ordering this week, and thanks for letting us be a part of your celebration at home. We've got a really terrific and super easy menu uh, to put together for you at home, so uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, so we've got these lovely Arctic char fillets, and um, it's got uh, some panko and herb breading. You want to take some olive oil and just drizzle about... Um, one tablespoon per person per filet. And your oven should be at 425. If you have a convection oven like I do, just put it on 400, always take 25 degrees off. And that's gonna go for 12 minutes. Hey Google, set a timer for 12 minutes. With the appetizer tonight, we've got a gorgeous um, Prosecco de Treviso. Uh, it's just lovely. It's not your typical really uh, super tart uh, Prosecco. It's got sort of wildflower and honey qualities to it. So a little bit richer and rounder than your typical and it's just really good. All right, so let's go ahead and get started plating our uh, appetizer. So this one is really simple to do. Um, so we've got some cornichon, we've got some uh, mustarda, uh, sea buckthorn and apple mustarda. And then we've got some homemade pickles. So we're gonna need uh, a couple spoons. Get that going on. So you can do one of two things. You can put it on one big plate and just kind of share, or you can plate it up individually, which I'm gonna do tonight. So terrain down. What's very important with this is that you hit it with a generous amount of crunchy sea salt if you have it. Regular salt will work if you don't, but the crunch, the, the sea salt, I get the Fleur de Sel from Farm Boy, and it's great because um, it has a nice, nice crunch to it. Texture is important. And it's a little less salty, I find as well. So, um, crostini down next. If you want, you can serve with this with some mustard. Totally your call, but uh, there's a lot of nice tart flavors in uh, the pickles that we've sent along. The crostini look great. We've got this lovely um, uh, dish towel uh, that the French embassy gave us for uh, when we did a, an event with them a uh, fundraising event, and uh, anyway, so it's nice to bring out every once in a while. So our pickles, you don't need to bring the juices out on this one. Let's see if you can divide the colors nicely. So they may change throughout the week, but in this case, we've got some pickled fennel, carrot, and cauliflower. And then our cornichon. I love a good terrain. And for those of you guys who are ordering the vegetarian dish this week, the nudie is something to behold. I'm gonna ask Chef Rich if we can maybe do the nudie for um, our non-vegetarian people in the future, because it's a really special dish. So with this, just put the terrine on the crostini and then top with your garnishes as you see fit. Again, you don't need the juices. That's a good looking dish. And you don't need to season anything else. So here is our pork and pistachio terrine done uh, with the um, sea buckthorn and apple mustarda. By the way, sea buckthorn uh, is grown in the Gaspé region or uh, foraged in the Gaspé region of Canada. And it's just got this beautiful, bright, acidic, uh, um, citrusy quality to it. Cornichon and the pickled veg. And now I should start working on my veg for the main course. This will be the, probably the first menu where I actually do things in order. So we want to take one tablespoon of canola or in my case grapeseed oil per person get the pan medium hot 
I've got our brown butter and celery root or celery yak puree that is warming in a pot. Just give it a little stir every once in a while. Make sure it's not drying out. Oh, and actually, I forgot. Chef Rich said, put a lid on it. Wrong lid. There we go. There's the right lid. Got to make sure I'm following the instructions. Otherwise, I get in trouble with the chef tomorrow. Okay, pan's looking good. Brussels sprouts are going in. We're going to cook those for about five minutes. Because they're raw, but the beets have been roasted already on salt to make them super sweet. Bring out that great quality, that earthiness to them. Hmm. This is going to go great with the terrine. Um, so while that's working out, why don't we uh, talk about the red wine? So um, I've been down to this vineyard a bunch of times. If you get down to Niagara once the pandemic is over and you can travel around a little bit, definitely stop in. Malabar, great small producer, really focused on Chardonnay and Pinot Noir, and this is their small lots Pinot Noir. Um, so uh, only uh, their, their best uh, Pinot done in very small batches. It comes up really great, very Burgundian, as they say. Tastes like um, good red Burgundy. Gorgeous. Uh, the spicy, earthy nose and fruity aromas of cherry extract, blueberry, and strawberry. Smoothly textured with silky tannins, taste fine sour cherry, blackberry, and raspberry, and cranberry with a delicately toasty aftertaste. Um, I love this one. You can do it with, with fish because it's got high acid, very soft tannins, very smooth, um, light, not too big and meaty. And um, so really, really good with uh, a red fish like the Arctic char or wild salmon. Um, so yeah, really nice on that front. So while this is going on, why don't I go ahead to dessert? Now, I've been told that the apple ricotta cake should be kept in the fridge until you're ready to eat it. Um, so you tempered the caramel. So very important if you're watching this video ahead of time, pull the caramel out because you want that at room temperature and you want the granola at room temperature. Make sure our Brussels sprouts don't burn. Some of the leaves are gonna come off and that's totally fine. If they discolor, you can toss them away. Don't forget to give your celery yak and brown butter puree a little hit. For those of you who are not familiar with brown butter, um, so you caramelize butter by heating it up very slowly until the milk fat's caramelized and then become really nutty and sweet. So um, we actually did that for a long, long time at that point. And it's, it's a special treat. Okay. So the apple out of the fridge, apple and ricotta cake. Um, we're going to put it on the plate first or the bowl in my case and drizzle with the caramel sauce and top with granola. Hopefully this fits. Yes, it does. Thank you, Megan. Okay, so I think that our Brussels sprouts are at the five minute mark. So I believe, uh, then add your beets to the pan along with one tablespoon of butter per person. There we go. These containers stack up real nice for the compost bin or the recycling box, whichever you prefer. So caramel sauce, I'm gonna try one with sort of all over the place, and maybe one down the center and see which one looks better in the end. I bet you that one is. This is looking good. I'm gonna turn the heat down a little bit. And don't forget to add some salt and pepper at the end. So granola gets tossed on top for that great crunch. When you're building dishes at home, always think about that. Always think about a crunch to your dish because the texture is very pleasant. So here is our apple and ricotta cake. 
done with spice caramel, and the maple pecan granola. Okay, this guy is almost ready. I'll leave it on just a little bit. Just to keep warm, but I'm gonna go ahead and season it now while we're waiting for that timing device that I shall not mention the name because it'll say yes to get going. While we're doing this, I'm gonna tell you about, we opened our restaurants inside last week, safely opened them. It is so fabulous. We haven't had a single staff member uh, test positive for COVID in all of our time that we've been open and closed and open and closed. Um, we opened Becta on, uh, or sorry, Gazelig on Wednesday, Becta on Thursday, Play on Friday. And it's just so great to have people inside again. So maximum four people per table. Last call is at nine o'clock. Restaurant has to be empty by 10 o'clock. So we take reservations starting at either 4.30 or 5 or 5.30, depending on the restaurant, so that you have lots of leisurely time. And um, and we can potentially seat the, the, the table twice because um, we're only allowed a maximum of 50 people in the restaurant at any given time. So know that it, we take our safety precautions very seriously and it's just lovely to, uh, to have people back in. Okay, so I know that our Arctic shower is about to go off. So I'm gonna start plating celery root puree down first. I think I'm gonna do a spoon for this guy. I can do the little chef swoosh. Oh man, I love the smell of this stuff. Um, the other thing I wanted to tell you about, if you guys are watching before Saturday at four, I'm doing this thing called Clubhouse at four o'clock with my old boss and mentor, Danny Meyer, who owns all of the Union Square Hospitality Group restaurants. So Gramercy Tavern, Union Square Cafe, The Modern, uh, at MoMA, Blue Smoke, Shake Shacks. Um, and we are having a conversation about great indoor dining at four o'clock on a new social media platform called Clubhouse. It is a um, it is an invite only thing. So uh, hopefully you can uh, get an invitation. So download the app. If it's only on um, uh, Apple right now, iOS. So if you've got an iPhone or an iPad for that matter, hey Google, off. So let me turn my oven off. Cancel upper, I timed that pretty well. Um, download it and uh, it's possible that if you've got a friend on there, they will invite you in. Uh, I think you can actually see um, who is on there of your contacts. And uh, you can also go on a waiting list and other people just might let you in, which is cool. So spread these out a little bit so it's not too tall so that the char can sit nicely on it. And if you got the, the sort of charred leaves, that's a nice way to finish. All right, Arctic char. There we go. Spatula. Arctic char is looking great. You can bake it right in the container it comes in, and it doesn't hold the heat too much. Oh. Man, I am excited by this dinner. A little extra skin. Well, I know who's getting that. Maybe our cat. Cat loves the Arctic char skin. Okay, salt and pepper on top. And then the last part is uh, the shallot vinaigrette. So we're gonna put some right on the fish. I'm gonna try a little bit on the side here as well. Cause you got a little extra, so why not? Extra sauce is always good.
which is prettier. I'm going with this one. So our baked Arctic char with the panko crust, uh, roasted Brussels sprouts, golden beets, uh, celery yak, and brown butter puree. Okay. Thanks for being a part of this this week. We're excited to bring you food at home until we can have you back in the dining room. Cheers.